never previously in Australia's history have so many opportunities existed for young women to train for such a wide range of interesting careers. More than 30 different types of occupation are available for young women who join the Women's Royal Australian Air Force, whose Air Chief Commandant is the Queen Mother. This is a passing out parade at Point Cook, Victoria, where all Women's Royal Australian Air Force recruits receive their initial training. These women have concluded their training and are now ready to take their places as qualified air women in the units of the Royal Australian Air Force. My name is Shirley Lumsden and I was known as Shirley James. I joined the Air Force in 1960 and I was an officer then in the Women's Royal Australian Air Force until 1964, December. My name is Margaret Campbell. I was Margaret Reed, W14604, Reed MM. That was me. <laughs> I joined in 1954, September 1954. Margaret June Gospel. Uh, I was Margaret June Hoy at the time and uh, I joined the Women's Royal Australian Air Force. I was 18 when I joined. I'd turned 18 in April. And um, I, I was working as a telephonist in the, the PMG in Brisbane. Uh, working in the trunk exchange and on, we'd have to work on information desk and on B074 and all of this where you told the time and all of that jazz. And a friend who was sitting, sitting there one day and she said that her friend had joined the WAF and she's talking about what Patsy had done. I said, oh, the WAF. Oh, I think I'll join the WAF. And I rang my dad because um, I wasn't living at home at that time. I'd moved out when I was 16. I rang my dad and I said, I'm going to join the WAF. And he was quite happy about that. And I went ahead and joined the WAF. <laughs> I went and applied to join the Air Force in May 1957. I was not quite 18. Uh, I got called up in May until I finally realised I wasn't 18 and put me off until the 26th of June 1957. And I joined in um, Sydney uh, when I was um, 27. I originally wanted to be a policewoman, but I wasn't tall enough. And uh, then I thought about the RANDs, uh, the Navy, but they wear uh, black stockings, so I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't too keen on them. So uh, my father was ex-Air Force and his brother was ex-Air Force. So uh, I joined the Women's Royal Australian Air Force. Never previously in Australia's history have so many opportunities existed for young women to train for such a wide range of interesting careers. More than 30 different types of occupation are available for young women who join the Women's Royal Australian Air Force, whose Air Chief Commandant is the Queen Mother. Well, there weren't many opportunities for women in those days. I mean, you, um, you were always maybe not, I couldn't call it a second-class citizen, but you were never quite on an equal with a male. Um, even husbands didn't treat their wives as an equal either in those days. So, you know, it was, um, I think that gave me the opportunity to what, rediscover myself and realise I had abilities, which maybe in civilian life I wouldn't have had because I, there weren't the same opportunities or there weren't the same opportunities in civilian life unless you were um, a graduate and maybe you'd been to university or something. Oh yes, you had a medical <laughs> and I had to laugh because I was short and I was allowed to keep my shoes on while he um, uh, measured my height and weight so that my, I, I wouldn't appear to be overweight because I was a bit dumpy. <laughs> I went to what was then classed as third form proficiency uh, and uh, th they weren't really that interested in academics. Uh, yes, you sat a, a, an exam for maths and English but uh, they weren't looking for geniuses, obviously. Uh, and uh, yeah, so. Uh... I had to go to Amberley and I had to sit on the switchboard and do a, um, an examination on the switchboard to see whether I could, I could go into that mustering in the Air Force. But I passed that okay. And I passed the IQ test okay. I had to laugh because later on, um, Jeff Marish, who was the squadron leader in charge of the section, came down to me one day and he said, did you realise that your IQ test was nearly genius? <laughs> didn't, know, didn't know that. <laughs> so that was a bit of a giggle. <laughs> Going to Sydney, I think I wanted a bit of a sea change, although they didn't call it that in those days. And I lived in Neutral Bay 
and I, that was where they had the Catalinas. And I think I was passing, and I thought, oh, that would be rather interesting, so I went and inquired. So I went to the recruiting, and I found the recruiting Army, Navy and Air Force, but I decided I'd recruit, I'd go into the Air Force. And uh, I applied, and I went for an interview with the squadron officer, and she at that time said to me, would I be interested in coming in as an officer? that they were planning to recruit officers in the next year. And I said, yes, I thought I would. So that was what I did. And I then went to Point Cook for recruit training. And I did my rookies at Point Cook and I was posted to Staff College at Point Cook, where I stayed for two years and nine months. I did my rookies at Point Cook, um, was posted to Point Cook later was posted to Penrith and then I got an exchange posting back to come to Point Cook because I loved Point Cook. The sign of the Royal Australian Air Force Base Point Cook, swinging in the breeze, offers a welcome to new recruits of the Women's Royal Australian Air Force. The gates open to admit the bus which has brought girls from all parts of Australia to commence their new life. At this base, they are given a four and a half weeks training course, which will fit them to take their place in the organisation. As they leave the bus at the barracks, which will be their home for the next few weeks, they are met by the WAF training officer. <laughs> 